Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. We are still watching. That's what we do. We keep watching. I have a video I'm going to make today about something that I found that's very interesting and encouragement to keep watching. Hang in there. Uh, everything's going as God has planned. Um, we have not received from anyone I can see that seven day warning. However, the signs are everywhere that this is about to happen. This is about to take place. I often wonder, are we going to get a seven day warning? Something like Damascus? Are we gonna get a, uh, a warning days in advance or hours in advance? I don't know how long the period of time is from when the earthquake strikes and all the dead rise first and we go up, it might be instantaneously. That might be our warning, is this huge earthquake that says, hey, this is it, it's happening. Um, might be that last trumpet blast, which is why I'm making this video today. I'm gonna make another video directed directly to the tribulation saint to let them know what has happened. Um, this event is about to take place. <clears throat> I believe uh, a lot of the watchers do, and everyone is looking very hard at September. Um, all of us are. <clears throat> and why are we? It's because there's a sense that something's about to take place from all the things we see going on in the world. So I want to get to the pictures that I snap during the week and talk about them and show you something that I found. Um, I was talking about this a couple of days ago with, uh, I'm in a little group chat, which is really cool, with Matt from Wackadoodle Samoan, with Will from Worship and Watch. I've showed you their YouTubes before. <clears throat> with uh, Tony from the um, Cataclysm, Tony Early, and with uh, Spinebreaker, Kevin. He's, uh, Spinebreaker finds a lot of stuff and, and researches for us and, uh, we kind of talk about things uh, in this chat that uh, we we really enjoy, actually. And uh, I'm bringing you the encouragement that we bring each other when we chat pretty much every day. Um, so I want to bring you the encouragement to let you know that this event is going to happen. It's uh, right around the corner. But something I found that I thought was pretty cool. Let's go to the pictures all right remember this verse this verse is pretty solid there's not a lot of wiggle room with this verse surely the lord god will do nothing but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets this verse is clearly telling us and and, and let me tell you something but the rapture is no small event it is a huge event it's it's earth shaking. It is it is a major event. So it's not something that's uh, done in secret. This is going to happen, and and those with eyes to see at that moment, hence the, the the saints of the tribulation will know exactly what just happened. And the rest of the world will think we got kidnapped or taken out of the way because we were intolerant, which is what uh, being taken away um, or removing the uh, the restrainer is once we're gone there is nothing stopping them from doing whatever they want uh, there's a lot of christians high up in government and all around the planet that simply are the voice of reason right now that voice of reason will be gone once we're gone Let's see if i can get rid of that uh there we go remember therefore how now here's a warning no this isn't a warning that, that's coming up this is to the church of Sardis, and I notice a theme in the Bible <clears throat> about 10 days. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent, which means to turn to Jesus. It's the only way out of this. Jesus is the only way out of this. That mess we're in, Jesus is the only way out. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, if you won't watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. So <clears throat> is this saying that the bride is going to go and the saint is not going to go? Or is this saying that some of us that aren't watching, it'll be a sh total shock that is happening? 
I don't know. That's debatable. I've heard a lot of good discussions on both sides of this uh, verse right here. Um, oh, this is Revelation 3.3. 3. Okay. That's just to the church of Sardis. Uh, this is uh, Revelation 3.3 3 that, that uh, we're discussing. Okay, so remember in Isaiah 46.10, God declares the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. This is all about Jesus, the creator of everything that we see. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He always has been, and he always will be. He is the great I am. All right. Let me go into this real quick, and I'm going to skip back out and come back to it. But I want you to notice something here. Up here at the top, I believe that creation day was September the 11th. Line one is what I'm looking at. Elul 28, I believe this is the first day of creation. I am not sure, and I said this before, if Jesus was born on this day or if he was born on Feast of Trumpets. It would make more sense if he was born on Feast of Trumpets as opposed to the first day of creation, which we know that the Feast of Trumpets is the first day of the year in Noah's time before the flood. Uh, this was changed, I think it was Numbers 12, where God changed the head of the year over to here, down here. Um, line one, the equal lux, March 17. This is how we know the year starts. This is the day of equal parts. This is the day where there's 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. This does not happen on the equinox. When the sun crosses over the equator, this day is not equal anywhere in the world. In Jerusalem, on March 16th, the day that Lazarus died, when Jesus made the comment while they were discussing the fact that Lazarus had died, Jesus makes the comment, are there not 12 hours in the day? This day is the day that Lazarus dies. I did not know that until I put it on the timeline, and boom, it fit perfectly. There's, in my mind, no discussion. He died on March the 16th. God changed the head of the year. I think it was Numbers 12. I have to go back and find that. Yeah, but he did it before they left Egypt. He did it as he was telling them to put the blood from the lamb that they had taken on the 10th day. They, on the 14th day, they had to take the blood of the lamb, put it around the door. And that very night is when they left out of uh, Egypt. And that's down here. Same event as Jesus on the cross. This is a picture of Jesus on the cross. Now, all of these four feasts in the spring have been filled. They are done. Jesus did it all. But back here, these are not fulfilled yet. And that is the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and Tabernacles. Now, why was... Jesus, I'm sorry, why was Noah in the ark for one year and ten days? Not, But the Bible will say he was in there for a year, but he actually was in there for one year and ten days. Uh, it says up here at the top, one year, ten days, Noah leaves the ark. He does this on Heshbon 27, but he goes, um, when the flood begins, is Heshbon 17, so you have one year and ten days. You have this ten-day gap. You also have a 10-day gap over here for the 10 days of awe from the Feast of Trumpets to the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is the day where everything is paid for. Now, this is what I was discussing with them a couple days ago, and I thought it was something very important, but I, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but this is what I think happened. And... Um, whether you believe, and, and, and it doesn't matter to me, this is not a salvational issue. I will never argue flat earth or round earth, ever, uh, because I don't know. I mean, we're going to find out when we get there. It is not a salvational issue. Um, those who are so concerned with it, more so than Jesus, you might want to get into Jesus. Forget about the flat earth or round earth. It's irrelevant. 
whether you believe, <clears throat> I don't even have a plate in here, whether you believe it's a flat earth and we have the sun or a flashlight hanging from a string, circling, it doesn't matter. Something happened during the flood. Something happened that caused summer, the springtime, which was in September, to shift to March. Something happened that it moved 10 days, six months and 10 days. Um, for lack of having a flat earth, round earth, this is the sun, this is the earth. This, it, this would be in September, where the sun is above the equator, springtime. When the sun is below the equator, it's fall. That's where we're headed right now. Now, there is a moment in time where the day in Jerusalem is equal to the night. Um, this doesn't change. It did during the flood. The planet shifted. And I believe that was one of the reasons why it had to be a flood. Because if Noah was not above the planet in water and this shift took place, all of the, the land masses, all of the mountains would be knocked out of place. I believe even the Bible talks about that. At some point, every mountain will be moved out of place. Will that shift happen again? Is that what's going to happen? No flood, but it shifts, and anything on the planet is going to be knocked, jostled around pretty pretty rough. So, again, I, I, no flat earth, no round earth. Let's, let's not discuss that. Let's discuss the sun and the equator, whether it's a string hanging. I, I don't know what flat earth is, but at any rate, what happens is that when it shifted, it took 10 days. It took 10 days, and I can show you that. It took 10 days out of time. Noah was actually on the ark for um, one year. What we see is one year and 10 days, and I'm going to try to explain that to you. All right, so the head of the year is March 16th. You count six months, which is 182 days, and you will land on the day of equal parts that it was previous to the flood. 183 days, the first day of the year, Tishri 1, which is September the 15th. Now, the head of the year, and this has never changed, even though the planet shifted like it did, the head of the year has never changed. It has always been September 15th. But because of that shift that took place, it now, there, and, you, and I'll show you, March 20, uh, September 26th, 27th is now the day of equal parts. So let me see if I can get out of this real quick. So see if I can articulate this properly to, to, to help everyone understand. For me, my timeline is easy because I'm the one that put it together and I fully understand it. And every time I find an event and I put it on here, it fits perfectly without flaw. Day by day, I, I didn't know that the flood, uh, the water began subsiding and it landed on the cross. I didn't know that. But when I do the count, 150 days from the head of the year for the Hebrew calendar of Tishri 1 from September 15th, if it was any other date, it would not land on the cross. It would land on somewhere else. But it, it lands on the cross. And also when the ark rested on Mount Ararat, the seventh month and 17th day, lands on the day Jesus resurrected, reversed the curse. So... During the seven-year Shemitah cycle, every seven years, always, the head of the year will always be, um, for, for, for the Hebrew calendar, before the flood. They're still recognizing this, and I don't know why they are, because God changed it for Moses when they were still in Egypt. Before he brought them out, he changed the head of the year to March. However... There was a period of time between the end of the flood and all the way up to the story of uh, Moses and changing the head of the year while they were still in Egypt before they left. God wanted to establish this. There was a period of time where their spring was their fall. They were still recognizing this Tishri 1 as the head of the year. So you go forward. 
and 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 I've been tr I've been trying to get this information for uh, quite a while now. And uh, like I said, I've been talking with uh, the guys on the chat, and we have found, or I have found, as I've been searching that. Now remember, the head of the year, previous to the flood, is Tishri one, September the fifteenth. Always, never changes. Always September fifteenth. It is always Tishri one. But there is a little known, and, and I'll show you, it's in the Bible. When it's a jubilee year, only when it's a jubilee year, the head of the year moves 10 days. It moves to the Day of Atonement. It moves to September 25th, 26th. It moves forward 10 days. Those are the 10 days of awe. And this only happens in a jubilee year. There's a lot of people who have done a lot more research than I have. It is not my strong point. The Jubilees or the Shemitah is not my strong point. The work that they've done is staggering. And when I ask, do you know that that 10 day move, that of that 10 day move, and not very many people know about it, but I'll show you. It's actually written right in the Bible. Hold on a second. Let me get to it. If I can find where I was. Let's see. Where was I? Here? I Sardis in the unions of the council and do all my pleasure. There. Okay. I have to go by the pictures as we go forward, and I'll get back to that conversation. King Charles declares 17 days of mourning as royals release Queen memorial details. The Queen passed away on the 8th. If you add eight days to this, you land on the 25th, Day of Atonement. I believe that there is, rather than them calling everybody who has all the money in the world that we've worked for, but they took, rather than calling each other and having a record, a voice record, or an email record or anything, I believe they put it in the movies. I believe they put it right in front of us uh, for everyone to see so that these people know when they're supposed to go into their caves and hide, just like the Bible tells us that they run into their caves, they get under the rocks, and they tell the rocks to fall on them to protect them. Fall on them means to go into their places and close the door so that nothing can get to them. Um, they think that that will protect them somehow. So they land here on the 25th. There are some good YouTube videos that are showing details of the 23rd, 24th, 25th in the videos, uh, like 923 is pretty big. I think Isaiah 53 uh, YouTube channel uh, did a, a YouTube on all the details. I think it was him. I'll find him here in a second if it was him. Anyway, I digress. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so what was the year of Jubilee? I don't know. I haven't studied this, but Greater minds than myself have studied this, and they say we're in a jubilee year. During the Day of Atonement, which you'll find in Numbers 36.4, the blowing of the ram's horn would indicate the start of the jubilee. Right there it's written. Boom, right there it's written. The head of the year is September the 15th, unless we're in a jubilee year. It moves 10 days. It the head of the year now becomes the Day of Atonement. And I want to tell you why this is so important. Let me get back to the pictures so I can tell you why it's so important. So we, we, have, we have proof of this in Numbers 36.4, that the head of the year is now Day of Atonement. It has moved 10 days, and it's written in our Bible. Here we are. Uh, according to Leviticus, let me go down about halfway. According to Leviticus, a loud trumpet should proclaim liberty throughout the country on the 10th day of the 7th month, the Day of Atonement, after the lapse of 7 Sabbaths of years, 49 years. So you see that the head of the year will always be on Tishri 1, on the Feast of Trumpets, unless... It is a jubilee year. It will move 10 days. And I'm, again, I'm going to show you why this is so important here in a second. This is a sabbatic year. Uh, you can go here and read it for yourself. I just showed you back here Leviticus 25. Levit Leviticus 25, if you'll read this, um, it doesn't specifically state that it is Tishri 1, but we know it is. This is the head of the year. This is the 
uh, blowing of trumpets. This is the day that they claim uh, is the new year. However, in Leviticus 25, thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years in the space of the seventh Sabbath of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. It's very clear on this. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound the tenth day of the seventh month. He moves it ten days. He moves it forward ten days. Now, why is this so important? Even the Jews recognize this time period. They're calling it Rosh Hashanah, but it is not. It is the Day of Atonement. Even they, even in their fault, they have recognized this. This will be their feast day. This will be the day that God will turn into lamentations. This is the day their feast day will be made into a, a sad day because they will be looking at Rosh Hashanah on this date for the head of their year, but it is actually the Day of Atonement, the day that we, I believe uh, uh, between now and then. I don't want to state for certain. I haven't gotten anything uh, like a dream or a uh, angel at the foot of my bed yet. Uh, nothing's happened in Damascus uh, to notify all of us. But as we go forward, um, I believe we're going to see something major. But I, I found this, and I thought this was pretty incredible. And again, I'll show you why it's so incredible. Fear, none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Are is the door shut to salvation, to the bride? And the bride waits those extra 10 days. Remember in the wedding of the Galilean, um, the, 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 uh, the bride waits in her chambers, closed in there, and all that she has while she's closed in there is her hearing. She can't see anything. But she can hear, and she's waiting for that trumpet blast. And her groom will come after one year. Maybe it's one year and ten days. After one year, and blow the trumpet, and she'll know now it's time. And she'll come out, and they'll pick her up and put her in a, uh, you know, something to carry her, which is uh, the resemblance of uh, being carried away into heaven. So there's another ten days it speaks of. Okay, this is why this is so important that this is accurate, what I'm saying. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes, causes shame. Now, Jesus would never cause shame. So this rapture must happen before summer ends. Before summer ends. And remember how I said, the first day of spring starts on uh, March 16th because that's the day of equal parts. I don't think summer ends on September 22nd. I don't think it begins at the equinox, uh, like so many say, March 21st, when the sun crosses over the equator. I think it begins on the day of equal parts in Israel, there's 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. I think that's why Jesus made that comment back there um, when they were discussing Lazarus dying. I think it was to pinpoint that date. And from that moment, we can number our days, just like the Bible says, teach us to number our days. From that point, you number your days simply forward. I also don't think that summer ends on September 22nd, because if it did, Jesus would not be gathering his bride during the summer, like a wise son, he would be gathering his bride the first day of winter or fall or whatever uh, they use. So there is another day of equal parts. It also happens on September the 27th. With everything going on and this moving 10 days, finding out that the Jubilee year moves the new year 10 days and finding out that spring or, or summer doesn't actually end until September the 27th. We have fallen correctly within the window. And that's super important that we fall within summer because I'm hearing a lot of people going, how is this happening? How come we're still here? How come we haven't left yet? 
And the reason is, is because God is going to give every last moment of every last chance to every last one of us to go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody, and accept the Lord in your heart and develop an intimate relationship with him and study his word, study his timeline. This is this is my strong point. It's not everybody's strong. Most people don't understand half of what I'm saying. I get a lot of questions, and that's okay. A lot of those people notice numbers or feathers or or have dreams. I don't have those things. Those things don't come to me. But I'm not I'm not I don't want to say jealous, but I'm not concerned that those things like people are like I wish I had. No, you don't. You have your gift. We all have our gift. I want you to remember that. Very important that each and every single one of you have a gift, whether you street preach or whether you make YouTube videos or whether you walk outside and see feathers. It's all very important and it's very intimate and inclusive to you and you as you watch all of this even if you don't understand this or you don't understand uh, other youtube videos or whatever it doesn't matter that's not what the point is this is not intimacy this is my intimacy your intimacy might be something that you see or do or dream or i, mean, I talk to people who have dreams every night and i'm like I fall asleep and five minutes later I wake up and it's morning. I have no idea of what happened <laughs> while I was sleeping. My wife says I snore. I don't believe her. Not for a second. I, I purr. I don't snore like a kitten. All right, hold on. Okay, so a wise son gathereth in the summer. Again, this is when Jesus spoke of as the day of equal parts. Look down there, I've highlighted it. March the 16th is the day of equal parts. It is 11 hours, 59 minutes, and 22 seconds. It is the closest moment to 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night that time and date can find. I don't know how to you know, make it exactly 12 hours, but it's within seconds, within absolute seconds of it being um, 12 hours. And then, and we say, okay, look, or at least I do, I say, okay, look, down here on the 22nd, go down to the, the, almost down to the bottom. It is not 12 hours a day and 12 hours at night on the 22nd when the sun crosses over the equator. It is 12 hours and 11 minutes. It is 11 minutes away. It is never going to happen on March 22nd. There is a lot of decent researchers that love God that are trying to figure this out, and they will always use the sun crossing the equator. And the way they know that that is accurate is a serpent appears on some Aztec building close to the equator, and that's how they know. And I just don't think that's what God would use. I believe God's going to use the facts. It's 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. And that's why I start the year here. But look, and I believe this is when this summer ends right here, 11 hours, 59 minutes, and 14 seconds. It is not a minute on one side away and three minutes away on the other side. No, it's right there on the 27th. This is the end of summer right here on the 26th, um, the day before. That would be the last moment of the day of equal parts on the 27th. So it would happen on the 26th. So you see what I'm saying? Everything that I'm discovering here with those 10 days and the, the rules the Bible says that he gathers in summer now fit and apply because of this. Summer does not end on September the 15th. It actually ends on September the 27th. All right. Up here at the top, German legislature, you've seen this, the German guy that warns of September the 24th. Again, I think this is the warning to the elite. It's been in the movies. It's been everywhere. These warnings, September 23rd, September 24th. I believe this is when they go into hiding. I think they're telling each other, not via email, so that it can be found out about and put out there into public, not in, in, in uh, phone conversations, because those can be recorded and put out there. No, they're using the media to tell their elite, the elitist friends, it's time to go get in your cave and hide. Uh, here he is, Isaiah 53. Uh, go watch the fig tree prophecy, the last video he had, and uh, he did a, a really good job in this video. And uh, uh, he discusses uh, this this issue again. 
iron sharpens iron. We all have a part of this. Nobody is an island and has all the information. I wanted to show you this. This is a circuit. This is called the circuit of the sun. It is amazing that it makes a figure eight. Flat earth, round earth, it doesn't matter. This is where the sun makes its circuit. A uh, flashlight hanging from a string. I, I don't know what what it is, if it's the sun out there, if it's the same size as the moon, I don't know, I don't care. It is making a circuit of eight. Now, that's super important to me because on um, December the 8th, I believe uh, either Jesus was conceived at that moment or Enoch was conceived at that moment. I believe Jesus and Enoch were both conceived within four days of each other. Enoch might be the one that was uh, born on the first day of uh, creation and conceived on Kislev 24, December the 8th. I don't know. Stuff I'm still working on. That's a picture I'm going to use. And that's a recording. Whoa. I don't know what I do. Whoa. There we go. And I'm looking at myself. Hold on. What did I do? Oh, no. Okay. There we go. <laughs> all right. So went through all the pictures. I've shown you that we're still in summer. We're going to be in summer until September the 26th, 27th in Israel. The wise sun gathers in summer. We can push because it says it in the Bible. Yeah, I think it was, what was it Numbers 36, 4, 26, 4. We can push. This is now every Jubilee year. That's the head of the year. That will happen 10 days after the head of the year. And ironically, not ironically, it happens on September the 27th, 26th, which is the day of equal parts. So you can't make this stuff up. You don't, we're not pushing anything. It's right here in front of us. I showed you how it's the day of equal parts. I believe that is the end of summer. And all of this now fits where I've heard so many conversations. Well, if we, you know, if, the, if, if, if it's what the Jews say on the 25th, 26th, and then you read that passage about the white sun gathers in summer, how are we going to pass the 22nd? And I asked the same question. How are you going to pass the 22nd if we say that Hanukkah, Tishri 1, is on September the 25th through the 27th. You've missed it by three days. But if the head of the if the end of summer ends on the day of equal parts, which is why I've made this whole timeline from the very beginning until now, if it ends on September the 27th, like I showed you, the day of equal parts, now everything fits in there. It all fits in there. When am I thinking this is going to happen? Tomorrow's the 15th. We have 10 days of awe. I think things are going to light up starting tomorrow around the world. I don't know. I haven't had an angel visit the, head, the uh, foot of my bed and say, hey, you're onto something. I haven't had that happen yet. But you can't deny that summer will end. Just like spring began on March 16th, the day of equal parts, summer will end on uh, September the 27th, the day of equal parts. Um, and in a jubilee year, the head of the year, previous to the flood, all year long, for 49 years, will be on Tishri 1, unless we're in a jubilee year, which I think Bob Barber over at the End Time Dreams and Visions has shown that we're in a jubilee year. Many have. It moves 10 days. I would think, personally, that the jubilee year would be at the end of all of it at the end of the seven year tribulation. But then I'm thinking the bride of Jesus and Jesus, the creator of everything, the Bible tells us that Jesus created all of this. He is God. And I would think that that would be his birthday present, sort of, sort of. I think that as I study this, Jesus was born tomorrow on the Feast of Trumpets. But I think it might be because of the 50 years, Jubilee, it moves. Now, trumpets does not move. Tomorrow is Feast of Trumpets. What moves is when we begin the year, when we count it, those 10 days. Noah was on that ark for one year and 10 days for a reason. And I believe this is why. I didn't know this. Again, I was discussing this a couple of days ago with uh, um, my brothers in this chat room. 
and um, I am of the opinion that if this is a jubilee year, that would explain how a wise sun gathers in summer and we can go past the 22nd because the sun going over the equator is not the day of equal parts. It is the 27th. So Repo Man 64, that's what I have found. I'm, I'm going to make my next video exclusively to the saints of the tribulation. These people are the five virgins that didn't have oil. They believe they are virgins. They are forgiven, but they will go through a part of this tribulation. Not the hard part, but they will go through a part of this tribulation. And I want to warn them. And that's my next video is going to be a, a direct warning to the saint of the tribulation. And um, again, these videos are going to be so important to them, insurmountable. Our our uh, subscribers are going to go through the roof on these uh, these videos because they're going to be searching like we never have. They are going to be trying to figure that out when their day is. And uh, I'm going to do a little research on when I think their day is. So we'll see. I did Quiet Place. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And so we can uh, get this message out there. And uh, we'll chat with you all later.